Dr. Richard Dobbins once said, sin will take you farther than you want to go, it will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it will charge you more than you want to pay. Zach is with Bill Harris, who this month is exploring the dangers of holding on to pet sins and how deliverance comes from the one who is hanged for our hang-ups. Well, Bill, you brought to the table this week and a heavy topic, but a topic applicable to many people in society. We're talking about sins that just won't let go, those yes. pet sins, um, something that a lot of people do need to hear about and to address. Yeah, they, they, and they're, they're the sins that can really take away your creativity, your productivity and the like, because if you're trying to move along and be successful in God, sin stands in the way of the progress. Mm -hmm. it, it always holds back, and that's why the writer of Hebrews said you, it, it, it's like running a race in Christianity, and you gotta lay that aside when you're running a race. You gotta take off all the weights yeah. and the thing that's besetting you or the sin that's besetting you so you can run the race. Well, you kick off um, your teaching with a quote that I think is very good. It talks about, sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay and it will charge you more than you want to pay. Yeah, and I got that statement from uh, the late Dr. Richard Dobbins. He was a very dear friend of mine, a mm -hmm. Christian psychologist uh, of Emerge Ministries in Akron, Ohio. And very often we don't count the cost of sin. Yeah. And before making that bad choice to see that, that path, that primrose path is gonna lead us down, we need, we need to count the cost of sin and sometimes that can deter us to make the right decision. Well, and I want to get to, um, because I think a certain part of your teaching, because I think a lot of people, maybe they do have these sins, and maybe they've had them a long time and can be very discouraged, almost uh, thinking, oh, yeah. what's the point? There's yeah. a hopelessness there. But before that, you set the basis by referencing Psalm 66. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, mm -hmm. the Lord will not hear. Yeah. Sin separates us. Yes, it does. It, and, and that's... That's what God was saying to Adam and Eve in the garden when he said that the day you, you sin or eat of the fruit, you're gonna die. And it was a spiritual death because they did not die physically. They didn't just drop dead after eating the fruit, mm -hmm. but the sin separated them from God. We know that because when he came looking for them that evening, they ran and hid. Yeah. And uh, that's what's so detrimental about it. That's why the Lord loved what David did. When he sinned, he, he repented quickly. <laughs> he got back into yeah. God's graces. And then we can go on because the blood will wash it away. And I don't mean to use that as a crutch to go ahead and sin and then come back sure. to God every time we want to. But if we will quickly repent of sin and get back in his graces, we can do so much better. Well, let's talk about then and what I mentioned. Maybe for those people who are discouraged, they feel like they've tried so many times to maybe to let go of these sins, mm -hmm. to get past them. And we hear a lot as Christians, we hear victories in Christ and yeah. you need to let that, but what does that mean uh, in, in terms of action and action steps? What can we do? It, you know, and, and some people are gonna identify with this because they've already done it. There are areas in my life, particularly when I was a youth coming along uh -huh. uh, that I had to deal with that. And this is where you're giving it to Christ and you have to change your environment sometimes. Hmm. Uh, my pastor used to, used to teach about how that he was, a, uh, he was a gang leader in New York City before the Lord saved him. And he had to make sure that he couldn't go ne near those places where he used to sin because hmm. they would draw him back into it. Sometimes there has to be a change in our environment when we get saved so that we're not tempted to go back into that. Sometimes yeah. a change in our thinking, we have to change what we're thinking about instead of entertaining the negative thoughts. Yeah. Change in the way we talk. We can't use the same old negative talk. Yeah. And when we fall, we have to understand that God's grace is, <laughs> is, is a forgiving grace and He will take us back up again. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't abandon us. Well, what I, I love that you address is the fact that we are armed and dangerous spiritually. I think yeah. that a lot of times we can get caught up thinking, well, I'm just going to try harder this next time to avoid it, or I'm going to try, and then, of course, we're not strong enough on our yeah. own, and that can be discouraging, but we are dangerous spiritually, and That's how does that the, work? That works in the regard that, first of all, we, as you said, we try. It's yeah. not us trying. We have to confess it to God, God, I can't help myself in this area. Yeah. And what he does is, that scripture talks about pulling down the strongholds and these things that rise up against God and even our thoughts. That thought life is so important, hmm. Zach. Giving that over to God and changing the way we think so that he can help us in these areas of our vulnerability. Yeah, well, and does that start, um, it seems like a lot of that should start just in pure time that we're spending with God. There you I go. think a lot of times we get caught up, we're so frustrated, but we haven't taken the time to spend with him 
to become armed and dangerous That's key. I, I was preaching at a church Sunday and I was saying some Christians can go through a whole day. They say they love God, but they never want to get in touch with Him the whole day. <laughs> you must spend time daily talking to the Lord. It, it, it's like the water you drink, the food you eat, the, the air you breathe. You have to do it daily. Thank you, Zach. Get more strong biblical teaching from Bill Harris every week during his 30-minute program update, Thursday mornings at 9 and Sundays at 1.30 p.m. So, have you been gathering your auction items? Now is the time to bring those to TV44. And Andy, Mark, and Jennifer, you have a few more interesting auction items to share. Well, thank you, Amber. Yes, we do have a few interesting auction items Don't to share. Don't call someone to have a seizure at home, please. So we've been sitting at so a bright. really nice outdoor table and chairs that were